Tis the season. Time for sappy Hallmark movies not based on reality. Kids Wish List also not based on reality. Trying to figure out how to drop those subtle hints of what you exactly might want for Christmas or the holidays. And then you can't forget the airing of grievances around the Festivus poll. Festivus for the rest of us. Let's get to it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Another episode of IBF On Demand. I'm your underappreciated, naughty, and not so humble host, Eric Wilson. You can find me at eric at ibf.org. That is eric at ibf.org. Thank you, Arkiva, as well, driving business transformation by solving what others cannot. Thank you for being with us through this whole journey we've been on for over two years now. I understand I may not be getting anything for Christmas. I know. I'm going to be alone for the holidays. I get that. But you have an opportunity to actually get yourself something for the holidays. So treat yourself. I know it sounds corny, but consider an IBF membership. We're going into the new year. There's a lot of new things going to be happening in this year to come. There's a lot of new content that's going to be available for IBF members. You also, you want to be part of this community. You want to give back to the community that you are actively a member and part of already. You're just not paying your dues. Well, pay your dues. Become a member, ibf.org. Check out IBF membership and be part of this larger community and be part of what's coming in 2023. Another thing that's going on in 2023 is a boot camp, February 15th through the 17th in Las Vegas. It's going to be an SNOP IBP boot camp. Three days of intensive knowledge of SNOP, fundamentals, next level, vanguard practices, everything you need to know. And it's in Las Vegas as well. You want to talk about treating yourself, come to that. And guess what? I'll be there as well. So you can celebrate a late Christmas, Festivus, Groundhog Day, whatever you want to celebrate with me, I'll be there as well. So come check out that event as well. Well, today... I wanted to talk about asking for something. I want to talk about when you need something in your work, whether it's going to be a system, a process, a headcount, whatever it may be. I get this question a lot. I mean a lot. And it's a tough question. I mean, questions like, we need a system. How can I convince them? Or how do I get approval for another planner or headcount? How do I get my company to even start doing forecasting? Or how can I become a senior vice president and triple my salary because of all the great information I've been giving them and they, for some reason, don't understand the value in it? Okay, that last one may be personal. But you understand the kind of questions I'm getting. These are questions of how do we expand a need that I, force, I see in my organization, a need in forecasting, a need in planning, a need for a system, a need for another person to be able to improve what we're doing. And you understand the improvements. I mean, in the ideal world, yeah, you'd come up with this genius new idea or this advancement for your organization or this new software that's going to solve all their problem. And you're going to tell your boss about it. And then immediately they gasp in brilliance. And they all say, what a wonderful idea. Here's all the money you need and time and resources. And we all know that, guess what? That doesn't even happen in the Hallmark movies. Reality is much more like what I'm going to get for Christmas. Nothing. So we have to do our part to not only convince, but to sell and be able to figure out how exactly to get what you may need. And that's what this episode is about. When we have to go and explain something, when we have to go to exp- uh, be able to lobby for what you need in your function, how do you do that? First of all, first thing on my list is ask yourself why. Ask yourself what you need, why you need it, when you need it, what's the benefit of what you're going to get. Because I'm, I'm telling you, if you don't know If you can't explain it, if you're not passionate about it, 
then guess what? Nobody else will be either. If you can't answer your own simple questions of, of a rationale to explain why you're getting this or why you want this or why, what's going to be the benefits of getting it, if you can't explain it to yourself, it's going to be a lot harder explaining it to others. So, I mean, the first step before you talk to anybody else is really start talking to yourself and understanding exactly what your needs are. And with that, you can exp- expand beyond just yourself and talk to your colleagues as well. Talk to the other people that's going to be impacted by this. And is it a need they even have? Start with yourself and then expand that universe to your colleagues that's going to be directly working with it as well or impacted with. And, and start building that business case with inside your own four walls or inside your own forehead and then expand from that. After you've done with that, step two of the process then, the next step then I would consider would be next, learn the needs and the language of your decision makers, of the people who are going to have the ultimate decision of this. Understand not only their needs, but the language they speak. First thing you may need to understand in this is before you sell the idea of a new process, can they even afford it? Is it, is it within a reasonable budget that you're going to be able to afford? Is it, is it going to be within the, your functional budget? What is the cycle you have for approval? What do they need? I've seen too many times that people will go in trying to sell, you know, hey, we need this uh, modification to a system or we need a head count. And they go into this process and they don't even realize internally inside their own organization what exactly the approval process is. That's an easy one. Figure out exactly what your approval process is. Who needs to be involved? Who needs to sign off? What do they need to be able to sign off? What are they looking at as far as a timeline for return on investment? The other parts of the needs are, are what are the business problems that's going to be solved with this as well? I mean, it's one thing great to say, yeah, you're going to be able to, I'm saving time, but is it going to save the organization money? What's the business? Are we going to be able to 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 be able to present things differently so they can make better business decisions. What's the business needs from this as well? And when a lot of times that you're starting to discuss those business needs, when you're starting to discuss, you know, what exactly how they're making decisions better with the information that you're going to be able to do with whatever you get, most likely though, it's better to start speaking in their language then as well. When you're presenting a business case to a decision maker that can holds the purse string or holds the decision for your project going forward, they're most likely going to be looking at my return on my investment. What is the investment I'm going to have to, how much of this is, you know, can amortize over time or how much of it is, you know, uh, uh, continuous expenses that I'm going to have ongoing. Capital. Is there, you know, a, a capital expense savings? What kind of savings, you know, can I have over long term? Immediate savings. Where does the savings impact? Other things you may want to talk about too is strategy. How is this keeping ahead of the competition or uh, staying ahead of where the market's going? Are we able to position ourselves better going forward? Those are things you can language to speak. Uh, that would help them understand the benefits of what you're doing as well. Things are creating efficiencies. The resources that are needed to be able to do certain you know things going forward to enable other types of processes. If this is an enabler for other types of, of processes down the road, that these are really the first steps that have to be made. Understanding those things as well. All those things are part of the language of an executive. Number three on my list would be educate. Yes, you want the executive summary. You want the high-level overview. One of the things I mentioned just a second ago, though, was this could be an enabler for other types of things. What resources do you need? I mentioned those two things. That is sometimes executives may not have that full picture or understanding. When I say educating, it's not just telling them the ROI or the improvement of this and that. It's helping them connect the dots sometimes as well. 
they're going to have their own understanding, their own bias. But sometimes that may not be what you see as an enabler, what you see as benefit. And sometimes a different perspective helps them connect the dots in a different way to help them understand that's why they're asking for that. Don't assume just because you're talking to your boss's boss or even your boss sometimes, don't assume that they know exactly what you do. Don't assume that they know how you do it or what you need to do it. Educating others on exactly the process and what it is, not getting into the weeds, obviously, with your executives, but making sure they have the fundamental and the educational part of the sales pitch as well to help connect the dots. That's what you're attempting to do. One thing I say, yes, I can get a new system and theoretically, hopefully, I can improve my accuracy. Great. Really though, who cares? There's a an honest conversation here outside of forecasting. Accuracy, forecast there is just used to beat you up with more so than them caring what that number is. Now, on the other side, if you say uncertainty is impacting inventory, there's many things that contribute to uncertainty. One of the major contributors to uncertainty is demand uncertainty. While we can't control uncertainty, we can actually predict it better. And one of the reasons why we can't predict it better is because of some of the limitations we have in our own system. So just being with the data we have, we, you know, and the resources we have as far as, you know, people and some of the uh, abilities we have, just enabling it with new technology can help us predict more of that uncertainty better. So then that's going to be able to provide a better signal so we can control our cash better. Okay, wow, now you got my attention. Now I can see why we're getting that system. And it was not only hitting my hot buttons, my ROI, my investment, my cash, but now I educated along the way as well. So don't forget the key aspect of education. Don't assume just because they're in a position higher you that they necessarily know everything you do and everything else. Next point I want to hit is finding a champion. This is more than a sponsor. You may need to find a sponsor that really helps navigate the entire process for you, helps break down those barriers, uh, helps you know make sure you can get the resources you need ultimately in the end. I mean, those are a sponsor and finding a good sponsor can be critical in a new project or implementation of whatever you want to do. Finding a champion may be a little bit different. Finding a champion doesn't necessarily have to hold the purse strings. Doesn't necessarily have to be your own boss. A champion can be anyone that is influential and acts more as a cheerleader for whatever you want, for that new system, for that new headcount, for your department. They act as a cheerleader. They most likely are seeing some benefit themselves from whatever you want to do. And they can not only see how that they can think, you know, a little bit broader, not only that benefit for you, but how that benefits them as well. It could be someone, an example of finance uh, that understands as they provide a better forecast, a better signal, they can be able to monetize that plan better and be able to figure out their P&L even more precisely if they have a cleaner, better volume forecast coming to them. So they understand the connection of being able to improve what you do to be able to offset what they do. Or it could be a shared resource. They know they need someone to be able to really look from a customer level to start diving down into bringing in more of customer inputs, POS data, because those things are impacting uh, margin dollars because of different, you know, uh, uh, promotions are done. It's impacting as far as uh, uh, other types of uh, things that are hitting the P&L. So they can see the benefit from it and understand that that person 
is going to fit better in your organization. So they're a champion for you bringing on that CPFR analyst, whatever it may be. But you can see how they can see the benefits and they become the champion. They become the cheerleader for whatever you want because they are saying, hey, yeah, that's not only benefiting them, but it's benefiting us as well. It helps you in multiple ways. It can help you because, number one, they can provide additional needs, additional benefits that you may not have thought of as well. They could help maybe bend the ear or get in the ear of someone that you may not have direct access to or just multiple people talking to the same person wins them over in the, in, in the end. It also then would provide a different functional perspective, which is a great way to add that cross-functional business benefit opposed to a personal or functional benefit that you're trying to provide as well. So the best thing to do is always try to find those champions, to find someone else that's going to be able to benefit that can be a cheerleader and have some influence for this as well. The next one on my list, just rolling through these, is be a salesperson. I mean, I get it. I am not a salesperson. I hate doing sales, but I need to put on that sales hat every now and then. Hey, have you checked out IBF.org, the IBF membership? I mean, I hate being a salesperson, but there is a need and a place, and really, you have to be salesy sometimes. And being salesy isn't always bad if you have a good product to sell. I believe IBF's a great product to sell. Well, guess what? Whatever you're selling, whether it's going to be that new product, that new process, that new system, that new person, I hope you believe in it. That was step number one. If you're not passionate about it, no one else is going to be either. So hopefully you believe in it. And if you believe in it, it's worth selling. So it's okay. Put on that leisure suit. Put on that salesman hat. Be a little bit of a salesperson in this process as well. One of the keys you look at in in Carnegie sales, whatever you're talking about, you always be selling. Actually, it's always be closing ABCs, but let's say always be selling. And that's one of the things that when you're starting a, you know, Lori, a pitch for a new product, you may need a lot of water cooler type of talk to get to the finish line. It may not be a one presentation. I said, ideally, you can, here's the idea to your boss and they gas, here's everything you need. Reality doesn't always work that way. Reality works is, okay, I need to convince multiple people. I have to get some allies. I have to find that champion. There may need to be a lot of different water cooler talk to really get enough grassroots support to be able to get the ultimate support you need for whatever you want. With that, you really need to develop the elevator pitch. You hear about this in sales a lot, and it's not, I mean, it's real. You need an elevator pitch. You may not always be able to, you know, set up your computer, hook it up, and here's this 50 slide PowerPoint of exactly all the fine details. A lot of people don't have time for that, and you always aren't in the position to be able to do that. Sometimes you have a 30 second or one minute pitch to really give the highlights of exactly what you need, why you need it, why the company is going to benefit, how, when's the company going to benefit, those key things I talked about early on, the need, the language, you're going to have to be able to really condense that into an elevator pitch to be able to give at the fly, if need be, of, hey, I heard you were talking about, you know, bringing on this new system. What do we, don't we already have a system? Yeah, but what we're actually not looking for is just a system. What we're looking for is to be able to enable us to be able to see this data in ways we currently don't have the capability. We already have the data. We already have the people. But bringing in this system, it's not just a system. It's the capabilities it's bringing into the, the well. And we'll probably be able to, you know, within easily eight months, be able to pay for the initial investment we're going to have in this. Okay, now you got my attention because I understand exactly a little bit more what you're doing. And wait a minute, eight months, how are we going to do? If we get a follow-up question, great. Be ready for those follow-up questions. Be ready to anticipate questions people have and have some answers ready as well. 
That's all part of selling. So those are all things that you need to be able to do as a salesperson. Another thing salespeople will tell you is the number one reason why people lose sales is not because they you know, are too salesy, they didn't hit the hot button, didn't have a good elevator pitch, they weren't able to you know, clarify or, or combat the different types of you know, arguments or you know, uh, objections they had. No, the number one reason why most sales don't happen is they don't ask for it. People don't ask for the sale. So guess what? Rarely are executives going to just come out with a pile of money and resources and tell you to build a planning department of your dreams. No, you're going to have to build the business case. You're going to have to sell it. And then guess what? You can't forget to ask for it. And I know that sounds easy, but once again, here's one of the pitfalls I see people fall into. They can have a great business case. They could do everything as far as up to this point, and they never go through. They go through a whole presentation of this is what we want, this is what we want, and so on and so forth, and they assume by saying that, that was asking. No. Ask for it. When could we get something of that, you know, uh, get this in place? Based on what I said, if, if I've, uh, you know, properly addressed all your concerns, is this something we're going to be able to do next quarter? That is asking for the sale. That's closing. That's what you need to do as well. It, that is all part of selling. And guess what? We need to put on our salesperson hat in this process as well. The final thing I want to leave you on. Here's the final thing. Take a quote from Mick Jagger. You can't always get what you want. The last step is be patient. You must appreciate executives' perspective sometimes. And guess what? Just because you ask it for it doesn't mean you get it. You must be sensitive to the organization's structure, their limitations, sometimes their priorities. Sometimes it is a good business decision to say no to what you want right now. Now, I know we're passionate about it. We see the benefit. We understand. Yeah, we do this. This is going to pay. There may be other things that we don't realize. And ultimately, it's a business decision that's made. And sometimes it's the right business decision made that we don't understand completely yet. So be patient. And also winning the confidence of support and management may take time. There may be cycles we have to go through here that we don't always get what we want on the first try. Maybe we say, okay, we're not going to do this. Can we start with a pilot? Maybe that's more palatable. Maybe that's an entry point for us as well. We can't get this, but can we get this? And it may take time to ultimately work to what ultimately you want. Management may not be ready to give you all that you're asking for right now, but they may be willing to give you a pilot or a piece or a, a point in the future where they're going to reconsider. Leave all those things on the table as options to go forward as well. And finally, use what they give you to make and make the most of it. Make those incremental improvements. If they give you a pilot, if they give you a piece, make the most of it. Show the results and come back now with a here's proof of concept that, yeah, what I was saying, this is proving out with. Over time, they may recognize the needs of your function. And over time, you may gain that support. Well, that's the end of this one and brings us actually to the end of 2022. I'm just going to go ahead and skip Christmas and go directly to 2023. My name is Eric. You can find me at eric at ibf.org. That's eric at ibf.org. I want to thank Arkiva, driving business transformation by solving what others cannot. Thank you, Arkiva. Thank you for being a great sponsor through these couple of years. It's not too late to treat yourself putting on that sales hat because I am passionate about this and I do see a lot of benefits with it is the IBF membership. And not only because I see a lot of benefits for you, but I see a lot of benefits just because we are a community and you'll be part of that community. You're going to see a lot of great benefits for it. And as I said, 2023 is going to be a year of a lot of new things at, at IBF and the Institute of Business Forecasting. And I really want you to not only be able to take advantage of it, 
but get access to it first as well. I'd uh, be able to get some emails and see what's co- coming in. So please consider IBF.org, becoming a membership. It's not a sales hat. Really. It's really, I'm passionate about it. I was a member long before I sat in this seat. Uh, I've always been a member because uh, it's some. It's a community that I'm part of and I've always wanted to be part of. And that's just one w- more way of being part of it. Uh, you can be part of the boot camp. Uh, not being salesy there as well, but it's going to be fun. Uh, it's an SNOP IBP boot camp. It's a lot of great content. Not only is it going to be fun, festivus, but it's also going to be a phenomenal opportunity to go deep into the weeds of SNOP IBP for three days in Las Vegas, February 15th through 17th. You can find out more about that at IBF.org. And by the way, if you're an IBF member, you get a discount to that as well. And you get some other things there as well. And I'm going to be there. I said you can, we can celebrate Festivus or Groundhog Day together that day, uh, that trip. So hopefully you check that out. Hopefully you come back in 2023. Check out this podcast. I want to thank you. Two years uh, continuing to be at the other end of this camera and being part of this. The 12 people that actively watch this, I want to thank each and every one of you. Uh, you're all invited over anytime, you know, for some bourbon, whatever. Uh, so one thing I want to leave you with as you wake up January 1st, don't forget before you start the day, before you start the new year, don't forget, wash your hands. May old acquaintance be forgot and left in 2022.